Have you ever wondered where Japan's rich culture originated? Our journey begins in a time far removed from the Japan we know today. Picture a land untouched by the march of progress, inhabited by a people living in harmony with the earth. This is the Jomon period, stretching from around 14,000 years before Christ to roughly 300 years before Christ. The Jomon people were among the first in the world to use pottery, crafting their vessels with such skill that they remain a marvel to this day. Their lives were simple, yet profoundly connected to the world around them. They lived as hunter-gatherers, roaming the land and sea, taking from nature only what they needed to survive. Yet, within this seemingly uncomplicated existence, the foundations of Japanese culture were being laid. The Yomon people's deep respect for nature, their community-driven lifestyle, and their reverence for the spirits that they believed inhabited the world around them. These are themes that continue to resonate in Japanese culture even today. As we move forward in time, we come to the Yayoi period, beginning around 300 years before Christ and lasting until about 300 years after. This was a time of significant change for the people of Japan. Rice farming was introduced, transforming the way of life from a nomadic existence to one centered around settled communities. The Yayoi period also saw the advent of metalworking, Bronze and iron were used not just for tools and weapons, but also for creating beautiful ornaments and ritual objects, signaling a shift towards a more complex society. These early periods in Japanese history are fascinating not just for their intrinsic value, but also for the light they shed on the origins of a culture that would grow to become one of the most unique in the world. Thus, the seeds of Japan's unique culture were sown in these early periods. As we continue our journey, will witness how these seeds blossomed into the rich and diverse cultural landscape that is Japan today. So stay tuned as we delve deeper into the captivating story of Japan's cultural history. How did Buddhism shape the cultural history of Japan? That's a question we'll delve into as we explore the Asuka and Nara periods, which spanned from 538 to 794 AD. These two periods were pivotal in shaping Japan's cultural identity with Buddhism and Chinese influences playing prominent roles. Buddhism, introduced to Japan during the Asuka period, was initially met with resistance, but gradually gained acceptance, entwining itself into the fabric of Japanese society. The Asuka period was marked by a significant shift in Japan's political and cultural landscape. The ruling elite, influenced by Chinese philosophies and systems of governance, began to implement reforms. Among these was the creation of Japan's first written constitution, known as the 17-Article Constitution. This document, authored by Prince Shotoku, outlined principles of moral and political conduct, heavily influenced by Buddhist and Confucian ideals. As we transition into the Nara period, Buddhism's influence grew even more profound. This era saw the construction of the Todaiji Temple, a testament to Buddhism's growing impact. The temple, commissioned by Emperor Shomu, housed the world's largest bronze statue of Buddha, symbolizing the deep-rooted influence of Buddhism in Japan. The Nara period was also characterized by the adoption of the Chinese writing system, further emphasizing the strong Chinese influence on Japanese culture. This period marked the beginning of Japan's literary tradition, with works such as the Kojiki and Nihon Shoki, providing invaluable insights into Japan's ancient history and mythology. In essence, the Asuka and Nara periods were transformative epics in Japan's history. They witnessed the integration of Buddhism into Japanese society, the adoption of Chinese philosophies, and the establishment of the nation's literary tradition. Buddhism and Chinese influences, therefore, played pivotal roles in shaping Japan's cultural identity. As we continue our journey through Japan's cultural history, we'll see how these influences have left indelible imprints that remain evident to this day. What era is known as the peak of Japanese imperial court and noted for its art and literature? Of course, we're talking about the Heian period, a golden age that spanned from 794 to 1185. During these nearly four centuries, Japanese culture experienced an unprecedented flourish that has left a lasting mark on the country's cultural heritage. The Heian period is characterized by its impressive strides in the arts, literature, and a distinct refinement of the courtly culture. One of the most notable contributions made during this time was the development of kana, a phonetic writing system that allowed the Japanese language to break free from its Chinese roots. 
This innovation gave birth to a unique literary style that is distinctly Japanese. And speaking of literature, we must mention the tale of Genji, often considered the world's first novel. This remarkable piece of literature, penned by the noblewoman Murasaki Shikibu, paints a vivid picture of courtly life and romance during the Heian period. It's not just a novel, it's a window into the thoughts, feelings, and experiences of people who lived a millennium ago. The Heian period was also an era of visual art. Yamato A, a style of painting that focused on Japanese landscapes and narratives, blossomed during this period. The vibrantly colored scenes depicted in these artworks mirror the elegant and sophisticated culture of the Heian court. And then there's the architecture. The Heian period saw the construction of the Phoenix Hall at Biodo Inn, a temple that remains one of the most exquisite examples of Heian architecture. Its design, which mimics a bird in flight, is a testament to the aesthetic sensibilities of this era. So there you have it, the Heian period, a time of cultural blossoming and refinement that has deeply influenced Japan's artistic and literary landscape. This era saw the birth of the world's first novel, the development of a unique writing system, and the creation of stunning visual arts and architecture. The Heian period thus stands as a testament to Japan's rich literary and artistic heritage. How did the warrior class influence Japanese culture? That's a question that's best answered by diving into the Kamakura and Muromachi periods, spanning from 1185 to 1573. This was a time when the samurai, Japan's warrior class, rose to prominence and fundamentally shaped the nation's culture. The samurai weren't just warriors, they were also arbiters of taste and culture, and their influence was far-reaching. The samurai aesthetic, with its emphasis on simplicity, austerity, and a deep appreciation for the transient beauty of nature, was imbued into every aspect of Japanese culture. This can be seen in the development of Zen Buddhism during this period. Zen Buddhism, with its emphasis on meditation and mindfulness appealed to the samurai class. It resonated with their values of discipline, focus, and the pursuit of perfection in every action. This pursuit of perfection was reflected in the arts too, notably in the development of no theater and what period in Japan is known for its isolation and cultural growth? The answer lies in the Azuchi Momoyama and Edo periods, a span of nearly 300 years from 1573 to 1868. These eras were marked by a fascinating paradox. Japan, in a self-imposed isolation, turned its back on the world, and yet, it was during this time of solitude that Japanese culture flourished like never before. One might say that it was the very act of turning inward that allowed Japan to nurture and refine its unique artistic traditions. One such tradition is the Kabuki theater, an art form that emerged during these periods and quickly gained popularity. Kabuki is a vibrant and dramatic style of theater characterized by its elaborate costumes, exaggerated makeup, and stylized performances. It's a spectacle for the senses, designed to captivate audiences with its visual flamboyance. Alongside Kabuki, the Bunraku Puppet Theater also rose to prominence. Bunraku is a form of traditional puppetry where intricately carved and costumed puppets act out complex dramas on stage, manipulated by skilled puppeteers. Despite being a world of make-believe, Bunraku mirrors the human world in its exploration of themes such as love, honor, and tragedy. But the Azuchi, Momoyama, and Edo periods weren't only about theatrical arts. This time also saw the rise of ukiyo-e, a genre of woodblock prints and paintings that depicted everything from beautiful landscapes and sumptuous court life to the bustling urban culture of Edo, modern-day Tokyo. Ukiyo-e, meaning pictures of the floating world, captured the fleeting beauty and ephemeral pleasures of life, offering a window into the heart of Japanese culture. So, in the heart of isolation, cultural arts found a fertile ground to grow and flourish, adding layers of depth and richness to Japan's cultural tapestry. The Azuchi Momoyama and Edo periods were a time of cultural blossoming, despite, or perhaps because of, Japan's isolation. How has Japan's culture evolved in modern times? A question that takes us back to a pivotal moment in Japan's history. The Meiji Restoration. This period, spanning from 1868 to 1912, marked a significant shift in Japan's cultural landscape. The Meiji Restoration was a time of rapid change, Japan opened its doors to the West, breaking away from its self-imposed isolation. This brought about an influx of Western culture, ideas, and technology. The Japanese embraced these new influences, integrating them into their way of life. But this wasn't a one-way street. The West also developed a fascination with Japanese culture, 
leading to an era known as Japanisme that saw Japanese aesthetics influencing Western art and design. Yet the path to modernity was not smooth. The impact of World War II was profound, casting a long shadow over Japan's cultural identity. The country was left devastated, its cities in ruins and its people grappling with the aftermath. But from these ashes, a new Japan emerged. In the post-war years, Japan underwent a miraculous recovery, transforming itself from a war-torn nation into a global economic powerhouse. This period saw a creative explosion in Japan, giving birth to cultural exports that have since become synonymous with the country. Anime and manga, for instance, have grown from their roots in post-war Japan to become global phenomena. These art forms have captivated audiences around the world, showcasing the depth and diversity of Japanese storytelling. Similarly, Japan's technological innovations have reshaped the world, from the ubiquitous presence of Japanese electronics to the rise of the country as a leader in robotics and artificial intelligence. Japan's culture continues to evolve, reflecting both its ancient traditions and its modern innovations. The country's journey from the Meiji Restoration to the present day is a testament to its resilience and adaptability. Today Japan stands as a fascinating blend of the old and the new, a nation where centuries-old temples coexist with cutting-edge technology, and where ancient customs are reinterpreted through the lens of modernity. So what makes Japan's culture so unique and enduring? This question takes us back to the dawn of Japan's culture, the Jomon period, when the first seeds of this remarkable civilization were sown. The people of Jomon, with their hunter-gatherer lifestyle and pottery-making skills, laid the foundation for the cultural richness that Japan would gradually cultivate over the centuries. The Asuka and Nara periods marked the advent of Buddhism in Japan, shaping its religious, artistic, and architectural landscape. The Heian period, a golden age of Japanese culture, gifted us with the world's first novel, The Tale of Genji, and the distinct aesthetics of Yamato-e painting. The Kamakura and Muromachi periods saw the rise of the samurai class and the spread of Zen Buddhism, influencing everything from tea ceremonies to martial arts to the poignant beauty of wabi-sabi. The Azuchi, Momoyama and Edo periods brought stability and isolation, fostering a unique culture that was quintessentially Japanese, from the flamboyant castles of the warlords to the bustling, vibrant life of the commoners in ukiyo-e prints. The Meiji Restoration propelled Japan onto the world stage, a period of rapid modernization and westernization. Yet, it was also a time when Japan clung fiercely to its traditions, a paradoxical interplay that continues to define its culture today. Indeed, the story of Japan's cultural history is a dance between tradition and innovation. It's a tale of resilience and adaptation, of a nation that has faced upheavals and emerged time and again with its spirit intact. It's a testament to a people who have held on to their roots while reaching out to embrace the world. Japan's culture, therefore, is not just a collection of art forms, traditions, and philosophies. It's a living, breathing entity, a reflection of the nation's journey through time. It's a testament to the Japanese spirit, steadfast, resilient, ever-evolving. Understanding Japan's cultural history provides us with a deep appreciation for its unique and enduring culture. This journey through time reveals the rich tapestry that is Japan. This, in essence, is the story of Japan a story that continues to unfold, captivating the world with its richness and depth.